Welcome to Bible 360 Revelation. The first verse tells us what this book is all about, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Its primary focus is not on history or the future, but on Jesus. The original recipients of John's book were enduring opposition and in some cases persecution. Revelation is meant to warn them and us that it will get worse before it gets better. However, God is faithful. Even when we are terrified or the world seems completely out of control, Jesus has the power and desire to save us. John is on an island in exile when a figure appears before him. The description of this, his appearance is fantastic and intimidating, but more importantly, it's consistent with the way Yahweh was characteristically described in the Old Testament. The figure identifies himself is the eternal one who holds the keys to life and death. And we soon learn this figure is Jesus. Jesus delivers an important message to seven different congregations. The Lord knows what's going on. It's not surprising to him that they are experiencing hardship or persecution. In fact, he encourages them that they already have everything that they need. They just have to hold on to their faith and guard their hope from being swindled away by false teachers. All these letters have two basic instructions, repent of your sins and faltering faith and hold fast to the gospel of Jesus. Then John sees the impressive throne room of heaven. There are 24 elders representing both old and new covenant people of God, and there are four living creatures that represent all of creation before God's presence. The one sitting on the throne has a scroll. No one could open this scroll, which was sealed seven times until the lamb who was slain appears. He opens these seals, which shows us that Jesus is not simply observing what takes place in the world. He's ultimately in charge and can exercise control over worldly events. But since his purpose is to rescue us, he is patiently waiting and working towards changing hearts and minds, not simply simply on the good life here and now. Now the four living creatures sing the same song basically, but instead of singing it to Yahweh on the throne, they sing it to the lamb who was slain. The lamb is worthy of the same glory and honor afforded to Yahweh. This is a fundamental and often repeated message of the book. And it's through the slain lamb, Jesus crucified, that God has rescued the world. That's absolutely critical. The only way the seals could be opened was by the lamb. Therefore, the only way you can understand Revelation is by acknowledging the lamb who was slain. Revelation is an artistic, arresting, colorful, symbolic, big picture view of what the Old and New Testament have already revealed to us in the person and work of Jesus. Revelation is not really a new revelation. It's the revelation of and about Jesus. It helps us see from new angles what God has already done and what he promises to do in Christ. There is simply not enough time to describe the dizzying and fascinating scenes that take place, but here's some general guidelines to help. First of all, Revelation's a lot like John's other books in that he's not a slave to linear timelines and prefers to build and circle around the same themes and events, adding new details and moving to a crescendo. Themes are repeated like a chorus with slightly altered arrangements. So while there are seven seals and seven trumpets and seven bowls, they mostly describe the same sorts of things with each focusing on slightly different aspects. For instance, the first four seals lead to the four horsemen of the apocalypse, unleashing destruction, famine, death, and war upon the earth. Well, the same sorts of judgments will take place as trumpets are blown and bulls are poured upon the earth. God will rescue what is good and get rid of what is evil. Interruptions are important in Revelation. These terrible scenes keep getting interrupted with announcements of the victory of the Lamb who is slain and God saving those who have remained faithful. Just when you think you can't take anymore, you don't have to because salvation intervenes and horror is replaced with joy, defeat overcome by victory. Later in the book, there is a dragon and a variety of terrifying beasts which communicate the same basic message. The world is corrupt. Nations and leaders are often false and self-serving. They promise a lot of different things, but what they actually bring about is exploitation, destruction, and wanton wickedness. The creatures are symbols of terrible and wicked destructive powers behind what is observable to the naked human eye. The lure to bow before the power and pleasures of this world are really insidious and treacherous. As the book comes to a close, it gets more and more dramatic. Eventually, once again, a great multitude cries out in victory as creation and God's faithful people are invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. Evil and the powers of this world are well and truly defeated and Satan is overthrown. Christ reigns forever and there is a beautiful and wholesome new heaven and earth. Jesus makes several proclamations that he has given us the victory. He will come back and will be made all will be made right and good. This is what Christians pray, wait, and live for, the return of Christ and the kingdom of God to be made complete and eternal. There are a lot of signs, symbols, 
and numbers throughout Revelation. And the key to understanding these symbols cannot be found in the news or through some newly revealed prophecy. The answers are found in the Old Testament and in Jesus' ministry and life. In order to get Revelation, you must first be familiar not only with books like Genesis and Exodus, but with Ezekiel, Daniel, and Zechariah. It's also key to have a good grasp of major eras of the Old Testament, like the Exodus or the Exile, or major practices of Israel, such as temple, the sacrifices, and the feasts and festivals. Revelation's primary goal is not to reveal what will take place. Its primary goal is to reveal Jesus, no matter what takes place. We can certainly find clear connections between current events because God knows how the world is and how people operate. However, remember that while it applies to us in our time, it doesn't only apply to 21st century readers. These kinds of things have been happening for forever, but they won't go on for forever. Jesus will return. He rules over the past, present, and the future. He has power over all the nations of this world, and he is going to usher in a new kingdom that is for all people, united by repentance and trust, and redeemed and rescued by the Lamb who is slain.